Continue on. Sorry, Jorge. Sorry. You're up. Uh, Introduce yourself name, and then start. I'm sorry. Uh, my name is Jorge Chavez. I'm a resident of District 7. Whatever I or anybody else says may or may not change your minds. Previous public and media comments have pretty much shown where each of you stands in this issue. But I would like to mention a couple of things. In the July 19 meeting, I spoke about the civic pride the Austin community stands to gain with an MLS team. I read sections of an article written by Natalie Gotchnor, who's the chief economist for the Salt Lake Chamber of Commerce. And she was speaking about her team, Real Salt Lake, and what it means to the city. In part, she wrote that economists calculate economic values by several measures, but she also noted this, the actual economic benefit of soccer transcends traditional economic bean counting. It's something called life quality. And it has value just as valid as traditional economic measures as jobs and wages. But bean counting apparently is what council has been being bogged down with since PSV began negotiating with the city. It seems very little value has been given to the life quality aspect of what a stadium and McCalla can bring. I am originally from El Paso, Texas, which is just a few miles down from I-10 in Tornillo, Texas or most of you visited a couple of months back, attempting to enter the ICE detention facility uh, housing 360 immigrant children. Gracias por representarnos en solidaridad, solidaridad con nuestros hermanos inmigrantes que estaban ahí. Thank you for supporting them. You weren't permitted to enter. But did you notice the soccer field that was there? Did you notice the children that were there? They were all from probably different countries and probably scared to death, but they were playing soccer. Why? Because it's something that connected them to their past and possibly their future here in the United States. <clears throat> now, as a fan of the US national team, it pains me to say this, but I agree with Sergio Tristan of Pancho Villa's Army, the Mexican national team support group who wrote in an op-ed this week. I believe soccer can open doors for kids just like me. Now, you all cared enough to travel 500 miles back and forth from Tornillo, and I hope you continue doing this. I really do. But why not also support the immigrant families and their kids by providing something that can help them be a part of our community? Speak Up Austin conducted a survey prior to July information session, and it based it was the basis for the, uh, the term sheet that we are all discussing at the moment. And uh, contrary to what Ms. Luca said, Austin was listening. 63%, I'm sorry, not one district had less than 63% of support for the Macala station. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, my name's Anthony Simmons. Um, I just wanted to come in as a fan and let you guys know that, uh, like, really, there's a lot of people out there that are really into soccer. I know it's not like the big sport here in the United States, but it really is like getting more and more ingrained in our country. Uh, basically, Austin, this is becoming more and more an international city, and soccer really is an international sport. Uh, I was talking to a guy outside from Rwanda, and he was, like, really excited to hear that we might be even getting, like, a Major League Soccer in here, and I'm excited too. I think it's a really good idea. Uh, I like what this guy was just saying, like, you know, there's a whole quality of life kind of uh, issue to this, you know, like basically, yeah, I know there's a lot of numbers that don't add up. There's a lot of things that, you know, you guys are kind of apprehensive about, but you know, the future's big for this city. It's about time that we get some, some kind of Major League Sport in here and soccer's the way to go, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, Andrew Urban, I'm with um, MLS in Austin, uh, District 7 resident, uh, Austin resident since 1984, went to Martin Junior High, played soccer at Anderson High School. Not good enough to play in college, sadly. But, uh, since last year, I've heard the phrase in numerous variants, I'm for soccer, but. The end of that sentence is then followed by an if statement that would make the project successful in that speaker's eyes. The problem has been that every time MLS or PSV would reach agreement on one of these statements, the if statement then would also change. I'm for soccer, but not on parkland. That was solved. I'm for, for, uh, for affordable housing, solved. Support youth soccer, solved. Need more upfront cash assurances, solved. 
harder relocation terms, solved. The list goes on and on. Then in the last minute, we tossed proposals from multiple developers, including at least one with ties to Bobby Epstein and his group that gets 20 million from the state, plus local tax breaks. This was obviously done because of a seemingly top five rule in Austin politics, that is, if you can't win, you delay and confuse the issue until it dies on the vine. Thankfully, we have a partner in MLS and PSV that wants to be here. They want to be a leader in the community. They, want, they are willing to uh, work with a deal uh, with, lo <laughs> with the Austin local government that can at times uh, be difficult. I've lived in Austin long enough to see some strange things happen in and come out of this chamber. It happens. Where we are now is that we have to resolve the end statement. We need to give MLS the certainty they deserve for how they've responded to every concern that we've had over the last nine months. Today is your chance to take the qualifier off the I love soccer but sentence and to recognize that Austin's first professional sports franchise wants to be a community leader here. To know that the term sheet created lets them be just that. To know that you've done something historic for everybody of Austin. Today you can vote on item 19 and say I'm for soccer, for major league soccer in Austin and confidently stop your sentence right there. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. How you doing, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members? My name is Kittredge Evans. I'm from District 3. Um, I'm probably going to contradict myself. I am actually for soccer, but I think that this process has been really kind of whack, if you know. Yeah, um, it's not been normal. I kind of feel sorry for the people that live over in the Michaela area. I know I would, I'm in District 3, and if they put a soccer stadium around me, I think I would probably have some issues with it, too. Um, Basically, I just want to say that we just need to try to redo the process and figure out some other way to get soccer in this town. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. I'm Susana Almanza with Poder. The Austin Strategic Housing Plan recommends thoughtful strategies and approaches to prevent displacement and to foster equitable communities. Invest in housing for those most in need create new and affordable housing choices, while also helping Austinites reduce their transportation costs and other household expenses. For, yet, for several years, Michaela Place was recommended site for affordable housing. Austin has a housing crisis, not a soccer crisis. For this reason, Baudet opposes pre-court major league soccer stadium proposal. Will pre-court deal become another Austin boondoggle? Why is the city cutting a rush deal with pre-court under scarce public scrutiny? When Daryl Slusher first ran for city council, his campaign distributed t-shirts listing 10 ways to spot a city boondoggle. According to Slusher, a deal might be a city hall boondoggle if 10. It's backed by a herd of lobbyists. Nine, it's listed for emergency passage. Eight, there's a deadline set by out-of-town investors. Seven, the contracts are more than two inches thick and were available only hours before they were to be approved or even after the meeting started. Six, lobbyists claim it will create jobs, promote tourism, and boost the tax base. Five, rules are suspended to limit public input. Four, it's touted as making Austin a world-class city. Three, voters have turned it down once, but it keeps coming back. Two, it's repeatedly posted for executive session. One, it's said that Austin is the only city of its size that doesn't have one. Again, number one. It's said that Austin is the only city of its size that doesn't have one. I think we can check out several of these that are listed here. And so will we have another boondoggle? I've lived to several of them here uh, in Austin because I'm a native. Let's stay focused and let's address the housing crisis. Every one of you on that council recognizes that there is a high housing crisis going on in this city. And yet, you would think we have a soccer crisis. 
What is more important? I can tell you of numerous soccer fields that are throughout my communities, at community centers, at recreation centers, at parks, you name it, they're everywhere. I don't see where someone is gonna be homeless or displaced. Thank you so much. Thank you. Go ahead and introduce yourself, please. Hello, Mayor and Council Members. My name is Jackie Acevedo Pope, and I'm a soccer coach at the Lone Star Soccer Club for the Girls Academy Development. I'm also a formal professional women's soccer player for the National Women's Soccer League, where I played for the Portland Thorns and professionally in Houston. I also played for the Mexican national team and had the privilege to participate in World Cups and travel around the world. I'm here today to support item 19 and bring Major Soccer League to Austin. But more importantly, I'm here to tell you why this opportunity is an amazing one for young girls in Austin. First, a little background. The U.S. Soccer Federation governs all levels of soccer in America, from major league all the way down to youth clubs. The U.S. Soccer Federation determines who can run the development academy. And in Austin, Lone Star is the only mandated organization to run a girls' academy. Since Lone Star already runs this girls' de development academy here, PSV would unlikely qualify to run one, given the size and the supply of play players. However, PSV will support Lone Star Girls Development Academy. This, this support will have a profound impact on girls soccer players in our community for decades to come. They will get a chance to play professional soccer just like I got. Every women's soccer league and girls academy has to start somewhere. Without a stadium deal in Austin, there's no MLS team. And without no MLS team, there's a smaller chance for a National Women's League soccer team. And without a National League soccer team, there's no Girls Development Academy. By the way, there's no opportunity for girls or boys if you, pick, if you put mixed use development on this site. Please make the decision tonight to bring MLS to Austin and all the benefits that will come with it for boys and also girls. Thank you. Hello. Ms. Pope, hang on a second, please. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you. I missed um, the first sentence or two of what you said. Were you speaking on behalf of Lone Star? Um, I'm speaking for myself. I am a coach at Lone Star Soccer Club. Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. I hope at some point we'll be able to just hear a little bit more from the appropriate party about what that arrangement will look like. Of course. Or would look like. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Introduce you, yourself, ma'am. please. Uh, yeah, I'm Stephen McGee. I'm a professor of business over at UT. I've taught here at UT for 40 years. Uh, I have a vested interest in soccer. I have no, um, I'm not being paid or I'm not on any particular side in this fight. There's just two important points I want to make. It's very important that Austin bring an MLS team here. Number two, I think it's very important that this city council cut through all the complications of where it should be and pick the very best spot and sit down with Precoer and negotiate the best deal for Austin and for Precoer so that it happens. That would be my recommendation. Now, um, let's think about the very best uh, football teams in the NFL. They got that way by drafting the very best players. Uh, Austin is a high-tech center. High-tech companies get best by getting the very best high-tech workers in the world. How do you hire the smartest and the best in the world? Well, um, Soccer recruiting requires side door kind of deals. How can Austin's high tech companies basically get the best people in the world? Well, I, my suggestion is this. Soccer is the dominant sport in the world. There are 200 countries in the world that, that have national teams. Three and a half billion people in the world out of seven billion something watch soccer. 46% of the world population therefore is invested in soccer. How do we attract the very best high-tech workers to Austin? Well, there exist 20 MLS teams that play in the United States. There's only seven cities, however, in the United States that are ranked in the top 25 cities in the world in high-tech. So Austin is trying to move into that group of the seven top U.S. cities in high-tech, and the smartest workers in the world are going to want to go to cities that are high-tech, the seven best in the U.S., and all seven of the best high-tech cities in the United States have MLS teams. 
New York, LA, Boston, Chicago, Dallas, Washington, and San Francisco slash uh, San Jose. All seven of those have MLS teams. I think without an MLS team, Austin's going to have a hard time getting the best workers and high-tech workers in the world to come here instead of one of those seven other American cities. Uh, one other point is that 43% of the founders of the Fortune 500 last December were immigrants. So the world market is where the talent is, and I think Austin can capitalize on that. Second, uh, second major point, I've gone to UT football games for over 40 years. Uh, and I've got a lot, of, a lot of MLS and international soccer games worldwide. There's a greater emotional energy in soccer than there is in American football. If there's a critical mass of Hispanics at soccer games, it's a different game. I see this Columbus Sioux crew succeeding uh, here far beyond what they're doing in Columbus. So I would hope that you would get ML, an MLS team here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Is uh, uh, Adam Kahn here? So he's going to speak. Is uh, Alexander Stenger here? Okay, why don't you come on down? Is uh, uh, Elmer Alvarez here? Elmer Alvarez? Well, you'll come down. Uh, is uh, uh, Ed Scruggs here? Ed Scruggs here, you'll line up too. Uh, and then is um, um, Roy Whaley here? No, is Debbie Russell here? No. Let's start with that group. Let's start with this group, Mr. Kahn. Hi, Adam Kahn testifying against the soccer stadium. Um, I could list probably 17 or 18 different reasons why at this point I think that this is a very misguided idea. Um, I've talked about how I just don't think it's right to be to take Columbus, Ohio's team. I've talked about that before. I've talked about the various aspects related to taxes and the stadium lease terms before. I think those are still valid. I frankly think that the best argument I've heard all night against it came from one of the supporters who just five or six speakers ago said the numbers don't add up. Exactly, that's the problem. The numbers on this deal don't add up. It's being rushed through, I absolutely second what Susan Almanza just said about how to spot a city hall boondoggle, and you're doing it again, and so for all of those reasons, I think that this is going to be a very, very, very bad idea. Um, the one thing I do wanna say, and the one final thing that I will add is all of you, on this dais at some point in the future are gonna have to face the voters again. And if this thing turns out to be the obvious and predictable debacle that it looks like right now, I would not wanna own it. I know that that's not my choice, I know that that's your choice, and frankly, I know the history that you don't very frequently don't listen to me, so you're gonna do whatever you're gonna do. I just wouldn't want to own this. Thank you. Why don't you come on up and tell me your name? Introduce yourself. So Hi. between speakers, if we could go back to this, really, it'll, you'll get out of here so much sooner. Go ahead, sir. All right. Hi, my name is Alexander Stranger, and unlike Mr. Precourt and Mr. Suttle, I am a resident of Austin and respectable tax-paying citizen. Look, I've studied this deal. I've gone over... The, the disastrous proposals, and I'm going to say that after thoroughly looking at this deal, this is a very Trumpian business proposal. I'm going to tell you this, okay? We're in an affordability crisis. We have a traffic crisis, and to bring in an absentee owner who refuses to pay property taxes and wants to pay rent at a fraction of what some of the developers, namely Chen and Littlefield, are going to pay is a slap in the face to all of the citizens here in Austin. Look, here's the thing. Precor doesn't want to pay taxes. The parking situation's a disaster. He's been found guilty of numerous health code violations while owner of the Columbus crew. I'm not going to say what they are. Let's just say I will not be eating at the concession stands 
at the stadium in Austin. Anyway, look, I know your time is valuable. We all know that this, this is a terrible deal. I used to work with first grade kids, and I can tell you this. My first graders would have written a better proposal than the deal that's being laid out under the table. All right. My name is Alex Stranger. I'm going to tell you this before I go, and it's in, this is what I have to, this is what I am leaving off with. And I'm going to say that building a dome around Austin and giving flamethrowers to our police is a better use of city resources than this debacle. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hello, my name is Raquel Alvarez and we are in Manchester City. We are here to ask you to please help bring MLS to Austin. My teammates and our families are excited to have our own professional team and all the benefits it will bring to our community. Thank you. Good job. Anybody else in that group want to speak? Thank you. Mr. Scruggs. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I, I'm strongly in support of this. I've been a soccer fan for so many years, and I think, um, as you can tell, there's overwhelming support here tonight. I won't take up all the time. I just There's a lot of misinformation floating around in opposition to this deal, and uh, you know we want to be transparent. We want to be the truth. We want to tell the truth, and both sides need to follow that advice. I think um, I opened an email this morning from someone collecting connected to local government, and it was saying, come here and oppose this giveaway, et cetera, et cetera, and subsidize soccer. And then it said, P.S., this has nothing to do with soccer. However, pre-court is welcome to come, but by the way, you should know that game tickets will cost more than $100 each. These games will not be for the average income residents. And I thought, $100 each, wow. And so I looked it up online, and. Uh, the Houston Dynamo, their tickets range from $25 to about $70. Dallas, it ranged from about $30 to $75. Colorado, about the same, and so on and so on. So I have a hard time believing that tickets would cost four times what it costs in Houston. So that's just an example. Um, another one I saw an ad in the Chronicle this week that said, we want a deal like Miami has. We want a vote like Miami has on a soccer stadium. The only issue with that is they're not voting on a soccer stadium in Miami. They're voting on a giant retail deal that will replace their municipal golf course. And according to the Miami Herald, only 10 cents of every dollar spent there will go to soccer. So I don't know if we want a deal like Miami. So it's just everyone needs to calm down a little bit, listen to the facts, and I think once you will do that, the decision will be clear. But I just want to say one thing on this. You look at this crowd out here tonight. You, we don't have all the slides. We can't organize all the donated time, et cetera. But we have those kids who are just up here. OK, this is not my city. It's not your city. It's their city, and it's our city. And I hope you listen. Thanks. Thank you. And Mayor, my mic didn't turn on when the kids were up here, but I just, Elmer, I just wanted to thank the kids from District 4 and from the Quail Creek neighborhood for having spent their night here with us. All right, let's bring another group on up here. Uh, Debbie Russell, I think he's in here now. Uh, you had some uh, donated time from Linda Curtis. Is Linda Curtis here? Okay. Uh, so you'll have uh, uh, four minutes. Is um, uh, Derek Ensign here? You'll be up uh, at this podium uh, here. Is uh, uh, Sharon Bly? No, you don't not want you to speak. Hang on. Is um, Ed English here? You'll be up at this uh, podium. Is uh, Andrew Urban, we've already heard from. Stephen McGee, we've heard from. Jackie Poth. Is Jamal Alsafar here? No. Uh, is Bill Bunch here? Yes. You'll be up to speak. Uh, is Jeff Jack here? Okay, you'll have four minutes donated time. Go ahead and start. 
Debbie Russell, District 3. Um, this is not about soccer. Soccer's great. This is about subsidizing a sports venture, and this is about what is the best use for this property. I would have sent you a bunch of links, but I assume most of you have done your homework. Uh, in summary, from Forbes to PBS to The Atlantic to experts from Stanford and the Brookings Institute and even the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, the consensus is clear, as summarized by sports economist Richard Bade, the idea that sports is a catalyst for economic development just doesn't hold water. U.S. News and World Report has a piece from last year called America's Priciest National Pastime. Sports subsidies aren't worth the cost to taxpayers. It's bad policy to sub subsidize sports, especially in an affordability crisis. It's bad policy to subsidize sports on valuable land the city already designated as prime affordable housing property. It's bad policy to do this without actually considering all the other options. It's bad policy to rush into bed with an entity who has lawsuits out on them. It's bad policy to rush into anything of this magnitude. It's bad policy to give something of this magnitude over to the city manager. It's bad policy to not immediately announce there will be a final public vote on any large subsidy deal, especially for sports, when it's well documented what bad policy such deals are. Um, you have put aside your duties here to for putting the recommendations for many important charter changes on the ballot provided you by your appointees on the Charter Revision Commission uh, because you just didn't have the time. So I'm, I'm still, we've been talking about priorities, in, priorities tonight and I'm really concerned about that. If you hit play for me, please. Um, this is, this is a surefire failure economically and politically and we are left here to wonder why. Mr. English? You had donated time from Fred Lewis. Is he here? Okay, keep going. You have one more minute. Is that your time? Ed, yes. Was that you? Was that your? No, that was not mine. Whose presentation was that? Debbie Russell. Debbie Russell's. Debbie Russell's. Okay, thank you. 
All right, go ahead, sir. If I could have um, the members of MLS in Austin come and stand with me. And um, if you guys are unaware, MLS in Austin was an organization founded in 2013 by Josh Babetsky in order to unite soccer supporters in Austin, rally them behind the cause of bringing an MLS soccer team to Austin. So this is a dream come true for these people here, and they represent um, thousands of people that we've connected with uh, across social media and through our newsletter. Um, so I would like to speak to you guys and say, first of all, I want to thank you all for working tirelessly to make this the best deal possible for Austinites. I genuinely mean that. But I have one simple question for you this evening. Do you want Major League Soccer in Austin? Do you want to have a connection to the international community in a way that only potentially 27 other cities in this country will have? The opportunity to host the likes of Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Carlos Vela, David Villa, and many other international superstars. In a time of wall-building rhetoric, do you want the opportunity to connect this community with our Mexican neighbors and host teams from Liga MX for friendlies and CONCACAF Champions League matches, teams that many in our community have deep family roots and traditions tied to? Because you won't get these opportunities with a minor league team playing in front of some bleachers at COTA. So I ask you again, do you want Major League Soccer in Austin? Because if so, tonight is the night to commit to PSV and MLS to begin a long and fruitful partnership. Council Member Poole, Austinites are tired of your stall tactics, and we know that you will never vote yes to bringing a city into your district. And if you want to argue this claim, know that whatever your intentions are, this is the message you have sent us. So let's stop moving the goalposts, stop playing games with us, your colleagues and pre-court sports centers. Council member Houston, as your constituent, I ask you please consider this stadium deal and do not hold out hope for an expo center deal with a different ownership group down the line or anything like that because this is the opportunity we have today. Just ask San Antonio of spurning MLS and relocation opportunity in 2005 if they have had another opportunity since then. So please, Council, commit one way or the other. Your consultants at Brailsford and Dunlavey have been clear. Articles in the Statesman comparing this to other MLS stadium deals have been clear. This is relatively an incredible stadium deal. So just choose tonight if you want to bring MLS soccer to Austin and if you want to represent the majority of Austinites and the majority in every single city council district, even District 7. So please, tonight vote to make history and do not pass up this opportunity that will likely never present itself again. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's, 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 let's try to do this thing in the snapping of the fingers. Ed English, you are the 10th person to speak. Uh, uh, on one side of this issue, so you're the last person for three minutes on this side, uh, and then there's one more person for three minutes on the other side, and then we'll get the bill. Go ahead. Ed English, long-term North Austin resident, and I'm going to try to bullet point this in the interest of time. Just as a reminder, McCalla is a high opportunity area with elementary schools, ACC, Northridge, transportation, jobs, health care services, and supermarkets within close proximity of McCalla. We as a city have talked a good game on affordable housing for many years. You now have an opportunity to put some action behind those words. Large tracts such as McCalla are becoming extinct. You need to take advantage of this opportunity. You've seen proposals that include significant housing opportunities that are viable options for McCalla. I happen to personally prefer the Capella No Stadium option, but they all have their pluses and minuses. Shouldn't these options be placed side by side with the stock soccer stadium after the numbers and blanks are filled in and then brought back to you as the council for your decision. We're not talking about nickels and dimes here. We're talking about a long-term commitment that involves hundreds of millions of dollars. Just as a point for public notification in case people are unaware, Circuit of the Americas has been in discussions and offered property for construction of a stadium there along with adequate parking. 
I'd like to offer a thank you to Council Member Poole and her co-sponsors for the proposed amendments that I have seen. Uh, and as an individual that was involved for years in contract negotiations, I particularly appreciate the fact that specifics and penalties were spelled out. Thank you very much for that. In closing, I ask that you vote no on this proposal or at minimum, remove the language that allows execution of a contract. Is not a transparent process open to comment on specific negotiated terms what you as council members deserve and the citizens of Austin deserve given the weight of the consequences of any action taken? Please take the time to cross the T's and dot the I's on both a stadium proposal and the developer's proposals before you, the council, take any action and make any commitments. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Is uh, um, Aaron Rashlin here? Great passing. What about um, um, Anthony Cardinal? Why don't you come on down? You're the last person to speak. Three minutes on this side. I'll make this pretty quick. My name is Anthony Cardinal. Uh, I'm a registered nurse, and uh, believe it or not, I am a resident of Austin. Uh, I live in District 4. Um, I've been an avid fan of MLS for the last 10 years, um, and I'd love to have an MLS team to call our own. I want a stadium at McCalla Place. Um, I'm not sure where all these other ideas have come from for McCalla uh, all of a sudden, um, when this land has been sitting there for years with no interest. Uh, um, but I, uh, I think anything besides the stadium in McCullough would be a terrible choice. McCullough is easily accessible via public transit and so close to other entertainment and restaurant options. With the stadium at McCullough, we will be able to take the light rail, rapid bus, or ride our bikes. We will be chanting together on the way there. We will be eating and drinking together before the game, and we will be marching together into the, the stadium, our stadium, cheering on our team. This team will help mend the divide that separates many of us. This team will become part of Austin's identity, and that should be exciting for anyone that cares about this city. At this point, it should be obvious to each and every one of you that the majority of Austin wants MLS. It will provide a unique entertainment option for all Austinites to enjoy. Please make the right choice tonight, and let's bring MLS to ATX. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm going to call a group of people to come up. Bill Bunch, why don't you come on up? You have two minutes. Um, uh, is uh, Pat Brodnax here? Pat Brodnax? No? What about uh, Michael Garfield? Why don't you come on down here? You have one minute. Uh, is uh, Kevin Frick or Fricky here? Okay, why don't you come on down? You have donated time from two people. Uh, uh, Miguel Fernandez. Is, is Mr. Fernandez here? No? What about uh, uh, Veronica uh, Rosas Fernandez? Is she here? And you'll have one minute. Uh, is uh, uh, Dan Brickley here? Dan Brickley? What about uh, Monica uh, Gioc? G-H-I-O-C? No? What about Jamal Alfasar? We called him before. Megan Meisenbach? What about Ken Rocklin? No, Virginia Palmer. What about Bill Oliver? Do I have any kids that have signed up here that want to speak? If they do, they should come on down to the podium. Is uh, Barbara Rush here? Okay. And then uh, last is uh, Chevis Watson here? Adam, come on in. Mr. Bunch, go ahead. You have two minutes. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, I want to start by saying that the question here should not be if it's your obligation to bring MLS here. If they want to come here, they should pay their own way, like the rest of us. Um, the issue is what obligation do you owe to your voters and taxpayers and Austin Water Utility ratepayers? And I think quite clearly, that obligation is to be fair, to be open, 
and first and foremost to get maximum value for the water utility and the ratepayers. Um, the MLS deal doesn't do that. It's a $200 million giveaway that robs the city, the water utility, AISD, ACC, um, Travis County, and uh, Central Health for what nobody disputes is literally hundreds of millions of dollars of if this were sold on the open market and developed and taxes paid over the next uh, 20 to 25 years. Um, why does somebody who's overprivileged and wealthy from out of state in this gilded age think that they can come to you, all of you, who have pledged that you understand we're in the Gilded Age and that this asset belongs to all of us and that we should not be transferring wealth to those who are already rich, but rather benefiting and working for working class and middle class people who actually live here and pay taxes. How do you look people in the eye and say you care about schools, you care about swimming pools and neighborhoods, you care about libraries and neighborhoods. You care about a clean Barton Springs. All of those things you tell people you don't have money to do. And yet, here we are on Thank a you. hurry up, not a stall, but a rush job to give away hundreds of millions of dollars. Thank you, Bill. The taxpayers get this Thank and you. the voters get it. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead and introduce yourself and then you can start. Hi, thank you, Michael Garfield, Section or District 8. What was your name, I'm sorry? Michael Garfield, District thank you. 8. At a time when people are struggling to keep their homes in this city, people with good jobs, people who inherited their family homes, it would be a history-making political blunder to bring soccer to Austin in a way that would deprive Austin schools of a projected up to $100 million in tax money, a public and memorable mistake to declare this precedent of secretive <coughs> closed-door negotiations Especially when public policy polling indicates that 81% of Austinites think pre-court agree, they agree that pre-court is an out-of-state corporation that should pay fair market value for city land and pay property taxes. And it's a signal to the world that Austin doesn't really understand what it means to be a world-class city. Because a world-class city doesn't sell out its schools and future creative and intellectual capital in unsupported backroom deals. A world-class city doesn't act with desperation as if better deals won't come to it. Austin is already a world-class city, but if we can't learn to define our own destiny and make decisions that cultivate prosperity for everyone who lives here, it will not remain one. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Introduce yourself and you can start. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Kevin Fricke. Uh, thank you for pronouncing that right, by the way. Uh, and I'm from District 10. I have served on the board of the Austin Men's Soccer Association for almost 10 years, and I'm now serving on the River City Rangers Youth Soccer Club. I have uh, coached soccer, primarily girls, for over 10 years for the YMCA, North Austin Soccer Association, and the, the Rangers, and my daughter currently plays soccer with the River City Rangers. I'm 100% in favor of bringing MLS to Austin. The arguments that I've heard against this, frankly, don't hold water. The land was identified by the city um, as a viable location for a stadium and was a wasteland for the last 20 years. It was bringing in no revenue for that time period and will now. As to parking, something I've heard a lot, I personally don't think that building large parking lots is the answer. I think the best stadium for events is UT. Um, as people disperse all around from where they were tailgating or whatnot, the worst experience I've ever had is at Cowboy Stadium at a Taylor Swift concert. It took me an hour to get out of a parking lot. It was terrible. <laughs> the latest I've heard is disapproval that uh, they only have a boys' development academy. And, and I know personally that PSV is committed to working with other clubs in Austin to provide the community benefits to both boys and girls. Thank you very uh, much. That's it. Let's bring MLS to ATX tonight, Thank please. You. Thank you. Before Mr. Watson starts speaking, is Dan Brickley here? Monica Giok? Megan Meisenbach? Ken Rockland? Virginia Palmer? Bill Oliver? I think Barbara Rush, we already have. She's keyed up. I signed up to speak. I signed Rory up to speak. And I'm sure we're getting down to you. Uh, Craig. Yeah. No, you're like five people further down. Is Josh Moeller here? What about uh, Josh? Come on down. 
and get in line, please. What about uh, Zachary uh, Christo Dulides? Dulides? Why don't you come on down? Uh, and Anthony Cardon. Come on down. Ms. Watson, go ahead, sir. Good evening, uh, Council, Mayor Spence. Um, you know, we come to you at this last attempt to do this for the very people who have voted you in office, who have held you accountable. I need not remind you all, but maybe I need to remind the folks behind me. This is a city where we do unique things, not just uh, play sport. In the last year, we've gotten fair chance hiring passed. We got the underage curfew banned. The police union contract was denied, very, very much rightly so. Citywide paid sick days ordinance. The county commissioner's idea to spend $100 million uh, of taxpayers' money to extend the women's building at, uh, at Travis County Correctional Complex also shut down. We got the ending of discretionary arrest passed here as well. We made the city a sanctuary city for all. Those have all been because the people have stood up and spoken on behalf of the people, not on behalf of just the passion. I decided, I thought I had five minutes. No, I it's my time one, donated. It's, it, I have uh, Rachel. Is Rachel, is Rachel mm -hmm. here? You have one more minute. It's one minute cool. per person. One minute. I thought after our special, uh, our special meeting on Tuesday, I'd do some more canvassing. Uh, you've got a, a Dan and a Rick over at Discount Tires. They don't want soccer there. All of my Latino brothers and sisters and abuelitas that uh, work at the, uh, the retail spaces on Breaker Lane, they don't really too much care for soccer there if that's going to cost them the, uh, the idea of affordable and attainable housing. So I, I need to remind you again, we got the $250 million affordable housing bond passed last year. So, I mean, last month. So again, we've been doing some very unique things in the city and soccer at McCullough Place wouldn't be so unique, but the post experience of the displacement, the dishonor, the disapproval will. We're not saying no to soccer. We've got a wealth of places to put it. We're saying no to soccer but on, on, between Kramer and Burnett on Breaker, where it's not set Thank for you. the people. Thank, Thank you. you. Go ahead. If I called your name, come on up. Introduce yourself. Good evening. I'll be, I'll be very brief. My name is Dante Cardoni, District 9. Um, first, I, I want to say thank you to the city staff, who I feel has been kind of caught in a crossfire for really no good reason. Um, they're doing their jobs. <laughs> Um, as best they can, and I think we should reflect that there are public servants as well. Um, and I'm just going to leave you with one stat. Uh, I know we've been told that we've had some pretty fake numbers tonight, but I just refreshed the login page, and there were 48 people here who signed up against it, and 234. So I feel like that speaks for itself. Thank you. Come on up. Good evening. Uh, my name is Zachary Christodelides. You did a very good job attempting to pronounce the very Greek last name, so I commend you for that. Thank you. Um, I'm a founder and producer of Austin's first uh, soccer talk radio program, The Throw-In, on 104.9 The Horn. As a member of the Austin Sports Media, uh, I've talked to Austinites on this issue. I followed the discussion very closely since October of last year, and let me tell you, the discussion has been great for a uh, sports talk radio program. I playfully called this uh, process on the show House Hunters, the Stadium Edition. And uh, as fun it's, as it's been to cover, talk, and listen to the city on this issue, we need a resolution. I'm here tonight to support Major League Soccer in Austin. We're ready for it. I've heard from people from Austinites firsthand, uh, and I've seen the passion that they have for the world's game. We're ready for Major League Soccer. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else whose name I called? Barbara Hasn't Rush. Barbara Bush? Rush. Rush. And then after she speaks, uh, next person is Josh Graham. Okay. And then Dr. Nazer, you're next. Roy Whaley, I don't have him donating time. I have him as a separate person. Go on. Um, Derek Ensign, we're going to Shane Costella. Shane Costella, why don't you come on down? Danny Woodfill. 
Danny Woodfill. What about uh, Brock Williams? Brock Williams? Okay. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and then start. Okay, thank you. Um, I brought my sister because she knows, knew a boondoggle when she saw it, and this absolutely is, and just shame. That's all I have to say. No on 19, yes on, on uh, Leslie's. And uh, it could be at the Expo Center, city-owned, county lease. The county's interested, um, but, you know, you weren't interesting. And local businesses are struggling and closing their doors. And what have you done for them? Instead of you're giving an out-of-town corporation millions of our taxpayer dollars. A developer offered the city $22.5 million last year um, to do housing, offices, parks, uh, all kinds of livable community. And you said no. Now we understand why. And they were, would pay property taxes, because this deal's been going on for two years behind the scenes, and open records showed that. And I want to remind you that this, the same lobbyist that's bringing this to Austin is the same one that many of you fought against F1 and giving millions of dollars to F1. That was his deal, too. And, um, and they just need to pay their own way. Soccer's welcome to come. Pay your own way. Thank you. Barbara, Barbara, Barbara. Wait one second. That's right. Um, you signed up as living in District 6. Did you move into District 6? No, I live in District 4. Oh, okay. It's on the list it says 6, and I thought that's, that was new no, information. No, District 4. All right, thanks. Go ahead. Uh, uh, City Council, my name is Josh Graham. I've been in Austin tonight for nearly 20 years. My wife and I currently reside in District 10. We're raising our two young boys. In the summer of 2000, my family moved to Austin from Illinois, and despite the move, my love for the Chicago Cubs remained strong. So in 2014, when the Cubs hosted their 100th anniversary of Wrigley Field, we went. Of course, in true Cubs fashion, the Cubs found a way to lose, but the game wasn't the only reason for going. Throughout the game, we chatted with fans in the neighboring seats, and one family in particular had held their seats for 50 years. That's 50 years of painfully bad Cubs baseball. So why hold their seats? It, wasn't, it certainly wasn't for the product on the field. It took a, an owner and a team willing to take a chance on the north side of Chicago to make the Cubs the integral part of Chicago that they are today. Tonight, we have a team and an owner willing to take that chance on Austin. City Council, please vote in favor of item 19 so that our grandchildren and great-grandchildren can one day celebrate 100 years of soccer at McAllen. Thank you. Thank you. You just have to, come, you have to stand up and get in line. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Adler and City Council. Uh, my name is Shane Costella. I'm a proud resident of District 4. Uh, I'm here to show support tonight for uh, item 19 and implore you all to vote for it uh, as well. Uh, I ask that you please weigh the incalculable community benefits of having a professional sports team here in our city as heavily as you're comparing the negotiated term sheet that PSB and you guys have all worked out uh, versus the opportunity cost and miss ROI of basically allowing the domain to bleed across Burnett Road. Um, as a city of transplants from around the city and uh, around the country and around the world, uh, as well as a city that often feels like several different Austins and segregated communities, I feel that there's no better opportunity uh, for Austinites of all stripes, new and old, uh, to coalesce into a single shared identity uh, to engage, interact, and celebrate with one another. Uh, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.